All right, so, oh, somebody, have the microphone on, please turn it off. Thank you. David? Yes. If you are at uh, school, please uh, join as listen only. And uh, you, you can actually turn off your, uh, completely turn off your uh, um, audio. Because um, if I uh, understand correctly, uh, uh, if I go set up the the screen to to um, uh, broadcast the audio, so I am correct to assume that you can hear my voice from the speakers in the classroom. Correct? All right. No, we are not going to do a quiz today, Jason. Don't worry about it. Uh, we are as uh, uh, crazy as it is right now because uh, I had this uh, flu-like sim symptoms and uh, uh, sneezing and coughing and uh, uh, I didn't want to come to school and at the same time I didn't want to to, to cancel the class so uh, you should be able to see me now over here hopefully you can see me all right so uh, let's continue we are going to uh, continue what we have talked about last time, but before we do anything, we uh, need to ask to to if uh, to know if anybody have any question at the moment before we begin. Do we have any questions? I can actually pull, but uh, I'm gonna just uh, start the poll at the right side. So any questions, anyone, if you can reply to the polls, that would be nice. So any questions? Um, a question I have, uh, who is logged in on the screen? So who's, uh, Fango, is it yours that is on the screen? Uh, is it Fango's that is on the screen? And Petros has a question. Go ahead, Petros. I'm all ears. Okay, perfect. Good. Fantastic. So, so I'm not going to wait for uh, Fango to, to answer the question because <laughs> he's not uh, on the thing. But uh, the rest, please reply on your uh, so the rest, please reply on the uh, 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 reply the polls. Petrus, you said that you have a question. So, if you have a question, you can actually um, turn on Fango's microphone and go and talk from the. I don't know if there's a microphone on the podium or not, but anyways, maybe there is a, a microphone over there. I have no idea. Anyways, uh, Petrus, you have a, you had a question. Petrus said yes. I'm not hearing a question. Okay, so let's start. If you have a question, just stop me. Type on a chat I'll, at left side. Hopefully, I will see that. Uh, I have the chats over here and a poll over here, so I'm going to keep asking questions and we'll uh, uh, continue. Uh, as we have started in the class. So last time we started creating a container and in that container uh, we wanted to teach um, uh, member functions and privacy and <coughs> uh, my apologies <coughs> and we uh, uh, by the way if you're at home uh, you can just turn on your microphone and talk or if you're at a private place you have a question just turn on the microphone and talk. Do not uh, uh, um, worry that you're going to interrupt me. I have there's no problem with that. So we said that um, we can have uh, member functions inside the class, and member functions do something to the pro to the properties of the class and therefore it can manipulate them each property or attribute of the class is essentially uh, is essentially uh, uh, global and accessible to all the methods of the class and we went through uh, let me just actually bring them up and go through them one by one so so um, when I talk about it, it's not going to be confusing so I'm going to bring these two up 
so we started by a non-object oriented container and we uh, had the container uh, as a struct and we passed uh, the structure into a display function and a read function we said that's not good um, we, we mentioned that that's not object oriented and to have things object oriented we have to make the actions of the container contained within itself and we call that encapsulation so we want to do that encapsulation and actually uh, apply it to this and therefore we brought all the functionalities of the container inside the container to ask the container to tell us if it's a, if it is in a safe empty state um, write a function to initialize it uh, set the amount of that we have in a in a container display what is the content of the container and read uh, the container and put the values inside the container we did some kind of a foolproof type of a read and we went through it and uh, we saw everything is working as um, as it should then improving that one we said that uh, we could make this container um, uh, a dynamic container and what happens is that we wanted to make the content over here dynamic thing to do that we had to create a function for initialization to make sure the rule that we follow, the standard that we follow to set all the values to null and make sure that the pointer is null at the beginning with that initialization everything starts up and then we at the end we had to remember to clean up everything before we exit the program so uh, to exit the program and we said that that's pretty painful because uh, 90 percent of the time when you actually write something you forget to initialize or or clear up because you're busy thinking about the logic so we need to make sure this thing is an automatic thing that is happening here this initialization and startup essentially we wanted to make the initialization to happen when a container is born at any moment that is born and we wanted all the data of the container to be given back to the OS and all the dirty business of it will taken care of after right before it is dead so doing so what we have done was creating something a procedure and I explicitly screamed in class and I said this is not a function remember what we have over here is not I repeat is not a function so um, we said we can create procedures that are automatically called when an object is is born a class is instantiated and another procedure that we can actually call we can m make sure that it's automatically called when the object is about to die we call the first one a constructor and we find we we call the last one a destructor so as essentially when you create these two procedures container and uh, this is the, uh, the the constructor and the destructor the uh, first of all the syntax of these things is that they carry the name of the class so whatever class you have you're gonna put that name over there number two is that they don't have a return value because they are not function they don't return anything because they don't return anything there is no return function in here that's the identifier in them so when I say actually container like that anything I put inside this procedure will be called automatically when the class is instantiated so in here in this uh, main thingy of ours when we said container CNT and when we ran our program we saw that as soon as the container is created is about to get created the constructor is invoked automatically so we put the init in there and therefore the object got initialized and then all the things that are supposed to be done is done so read the container content is um, milk volume is 200 and 100 and as soon as the container is displayed as you see right before the container wants to go off scope and therefore CNT dies the destructor of the container is called automatically 
and obviously we put the clear up function in it and the clear up function deallocated the the uh, dynamic memory that we had and uh, therefore we don't have any dynamic memory allocation so that was the constructor and destructor that we started to teach are we okay with this is everybody okay so so let me just see so I'm gonna say uh, are we good all right and some of you that were not answering I'm hoping that uh, uh, you're actually listening otherwise what is the point of uh, being uh, all, uh, doing all this so um, uh, let's continue now the next thing I want to talk about over here is this structure called automatically when main function ends uh, it's not that only when main function ends let me so uh, uh, and just it clears up everything Oh, wait a minute, lots of chats over here. Constructor is just a class without any instance, right? No, it's not. Dev, it's not. The constructor is not a class uh, without any instance. Constructor is uh, a procedure that is called when the object is created. It, oh, yeah, and you're saying, oh, it's a procedure. So we can call it without any object. So that's, so dev. I screened that class that constructors are not functions. They cannot be called. They are a procedure. They are called automatically when something is born. Automatically. We don't control their calling. Later on, we learned that when you attempt to call them, the syntax is correct, but the action of calling a constructor doesn't call anything. It does something completely different that we'll find out later on. It has a consequence that we're going to find out later on. So, um, and the destructor is called automatically when the function ends. That's not the right thing to say. The destructor is called when something goes out of something dies okay so dev are we okay with this good how about uh, also now i'm going to answer uh Krinskumar. okay so the answer to your question is this take a look at this so i'm going to create another con con container here i'm going to say container pointer p and i'm going to say new container so as you see i just created a new container and then in here i'm going to say for example p uh, read so read that container the dynamic one and in here i'm going to say uh, p display and now see what's going to happen so first cnt is created over here okay so it creates cnt all right and then after that uh the uh, uh, and uh, so the f the first constructor is created then a dynamic constructor is created therefore the second constructor is called this one initializes the second one and now i'm reading that the 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 dynamic const uh, the dynamic uh, container over here so it's gonna read the dynamic container telling me what is the content I'm gonna say dynamic milk <laughs> and volume 200 and 100 over there and then it's gonna display the container obviously so we're gonna see that the container is displayed is this there you go so dynamic milk is displayed and then we have the regular milk over here and we're going to actually call that so it's going to go over here so we have uh i should have gone to new line i didn't so in here i'm going to say what am i going to say i'm going to say milk and i'm doing something wrong in the reading i have to fix that it says bad data why it did it say that i don't know so i'm going to do again milk 200 and let's say 50 okay and I'm gonna run that again 
and now as you see over here it displays 5 out of 200 but take a look when I'm going out uh, and uh, Chris Kumar hopefully you're you're paying attention to this as soon as it goes out it goes to the destructor and clears up look at the content the content is milk not the dynamic one and then it goes out and program ends so we have memory leak as you see the destructor of the con con dynamic container is not even called even when main is over why because we created it we have to destroy it okay so keep that in mind then uh, also let me see why that uh, containers read is uh, throwing garbage at me so what did we do wow that was quite this is quite a complicated thing it says bad data so reads I will find that next uh, next one I'm gonna to walk through it to see what it is now what I'm gonna do over here I'm gonna write a delete right in the middle over here so I'm gonna say delete P so I'm gonna delete P right after displaying it so I'm gonna come right over here the read is gonna happen so I'm gonna go to read and I'm gonna walk through it to see what was my mistake over there so we're gonna um, and I think uh, the display I have to do something well the display 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 where's my display so I forgot to go to new line in here so I have to here go to new line and in here I have to go to new line too after printing them out and then we'll see what happens anyways so let's continue so uh, it's gonna show the content and ask for the content so I'm gonna enter over there mil uh, this is dynamic milk that is called and then it, it, it didn't fail it's gonna say uh, container volume I'm gonna say over here 200 it comes to the next one shows the amount reads the amount I'm gonna say 100 so 100 is red it set the content we have a backslash and in the keyboard so it comes up it says if C in fail why C in fail yeah that's right it didn't fail so C in fail is wrong so it comes out good so remember we have a backslash in 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 the keyboard right now after reading this probably that's the one that says bad data it comes over here um, get line gets the content that is only a new line let's see if it's gonna work I don't know well, what went wrong I'll we'll find out anyways so we'll come up over here we're gonna display the value so the, the the dynamic milk over here is is displayed as you see now I'm gonna say delete P there is no um, end of block or anything but now P is about to the container that is being pointed to P is about to die because of that the destructor is called so the destructor is always called when something is dying now that could be end of a scope end of a function end of a program uh, deletion of a dynamic thing whatever is the reason if an object dies that's when the destructor is called are we good now <laughs> all right and I'm checking the chats to see Dev was typing something and changed her mind I think or his mind okay so let me see what is wrong while it's being typed over there let me see what is wrong with the other read so it comes so now it's gonna come to read it starts over here content volume CN is not in failure it says content now I think it reads right off the bat a backslash n so it reads the backslash n immediately it doesn't stop so it means at the end of this we, we need to flush keyboard when we are done so if we have anything see in dot ignore backslash n 
just to make sure that nothing is left because the last thing is an integer if they say enter something so now the read is going to work properly anyways so um, are we good can we continue with the constructors <laughs> All right, so sorry for all these movements and stuff. I have pain all over my, my body. It's crazy. I hope it's not COVID. Believe it or not, let me pause. All right, so uh, that's that. So that's how the constructors work. It doesn't matter what happens. They are not functions. You don't call them. They are just entities. Uh, they are just procedures and they are called when an object is born or it is about to die. So uh, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to break this container out and make it a module so we don't have a big code to go up and down in. So let's do that. So uh, again, to break the container into a module, I'm going to right click and go add because I'm lazy. I'm going to add a class. Let's, oh, it's not going to let me create a container because I already have a container. Cancel. Mm, what do I do? I'm going to remove this. Remove, and now I'm going to add it. Add a class. I'm going to call it a container. HCPP. Perfect. So it's going to create the header file in the module for me. And I'm going to have over here, if not defined, uh, if not defined, uh, uh, SDDS container and in here I'm going to say define and I'm going to say and if and in here I'm going to say namespace SDDS and put the container in it so that's my uh, that's my uh, header file and for the CPP file I'm just going to create the namespace SDDS and now I'm going to bring back my um, program over here. So copy the container header in there. So that's the header goes in there into the container. And as you see, this one is called class container. Um, it doesn't make any difference. I'm just going to make it change it to a class. And I'm going to explain to you exactly what the difference is. Class container. Uh, or uh, class container or um, um, class container or uh, struct container are the same. And uh, now I'm going to bring all the <coughs> functionalities in and that's all the container that we have. So it goes into container.cpp. We'll remove the namespace. We don't need it, need it. This looks good. We need to include container. Why is it not recognizing my container? Oh, because it's not an include. Something's fishy in here. It's giving me error for include. Huh. Why? Wait a minute, something is fishy in here. Um, Container.h, no, that looks good. I'll find out. Give me a second. Using namespace stds. Um, I think you forgot end if. Did I forgot end if? No, this is end if. Uh, check your container.h again. Nah, it doesn't matter. They are both exactly the same. O stream is not defined, so let me do that. 
so include io stream and you know that we are not allowed to use using in a header file so i'm going to qualify it by putting st uh, std over here that's my o stream so that's the container pragma once oh yes it's pragma once not pragma one so that was the reason i'll i'll remove that one i don't like that pragma pragma thingy anyway so now we're going to come to container and in here we're going to add include io io stream and i'm going to say using namespace std that's going to resolve the problems over here that's an extra thing from the other file and the cpp file over here is still complaining for including container I have no idea oh mm, save save everything am I making a mistake let me see what happened so if not defined stds container that's not a mistake I just uh, I'm following my own things and then I'm going to say include IO stream. So this is good. Container.cpp is good. Let me compile this. Container.cpp compile. SDR copy may be unsafe. Yeah, oh, we have utils. I have to say include utils. Utils to use my SDR copy. Let's do it one more time. Uh, compile okay so our compiler th that is fixed now I'm going to come to prg.cpp uh, I don't need the utils here yet if I need it I'll bring it but in here I'm going to say include it doesn't see container what is going on here Is this prg.cpp in this file? Don't save. Properties. I think, let me just check something. Add existing item. Yes, I brought the prg.cpp from another directory by mistake. You see that prg.cpp? That's the one that we have over here. Uh, it's from the other um, uh, day. It's from the last day. So I'm going to save this. Uh, let's uh, get out of that thing. Completely uh, close it. And remove it. Now I'm going to go add existing items. add existing items this first thing I'm gonna revert this so it goes back to what it was that's a good thing about git you can undo everything so I'm gonna say revert that that's gonna go back to what it was before okay so that's fixed now I'm gonna come back over here in September 26 that's the program I was supposed to add so that was the reason because the program was brought in from another directory it couldn't see that container.h because it didn't have anything beside it now this program over here that I added this is the right one now I can remove everything in here and it's gonna be just fine hopefully I didn't change much so I think I'll be fine I'm gonna remove that namespace std yes we don't need std we need this is gonna be include now it sees the container so uh, you know what happened, right? Everybody understood what happened? Okay. These type of errors that are happening, be happy because um, it might happen to you and now you have seen me doing it and then um, you kind of find out what happens to you if you, whenever you want to do it. So uh, it's a good thing to, to, uh, to know these things. 
Anyways, so now that we are down to this point, which essentially means we have created a, a, a container and we, we created a constructor and a destructor for it, let's go a bit further in this thing and see what else we can do with these constructors and destructors. So let's say if I wanted a container to be created like this. So, so let me just save this. I'm going to say um, these type of containers, let me just call it right now, these type of con uh, these type of constructors that they don't accept any argument and they just carry the name of the class and that's it. I'm not talking about the destructor. I'm just talking about the constructor. So this is the constructor. But these type of constructor that they don't accept any values or anything, they are called no argument constructor or default constructors. Okay, default constructor essentially means they set your uh, class to its def default state, whatever it is. Okay, it could be an invalid state, it could be anything. So that's what they essentially do. Now, the next thing we need to know about this is that uh, you, because constructors are uh, are made to construct your object, they literally build your object, you can pass values to them. For example, so let me first save this over here. I'm going to say um, a default constructor dot cpp default constructor call. Okay, now I'm going to change this to another thing. Let's come over here and take a look. Instead of doing something like this, I wish I could say container and I would say c is equal to say uh, what do I say gasoline okay so I want to be able to do something like this and I would say if I if I didn't mention if I did not mention what the type is I want the thing to be 220 liters and it's going to be full. I want to be able to do something like this, which means I want to pass one argument to the con constructor and let it call it. To do that, you can create a constructor that accepts only one argument. So I can have over here a construct a container and in here, I put what I want to get over here. I want it to be initialized with a character string I'll put a character scene. So I'm going to say constant character pointer, what should we call it? Uh, say uh, content. Okay? So I can create a constructor that accepts only one argument. And then that one argument, one argument constructor, I will create it like this. I'm going to call set for it easily. I'm going to say set in here, pass the content. And I'm going to say, by default, anybody passes this, I'm going to make 220 liters of this and 220 liters, uh, which means it's a full container of whatever you create. So what happens, because this constructor accepts one argument, it makes initialization to single values possible. And now I can actually say over here, c.display, and you will see that it will work perfectly. So if I run the program now, when I actually create one thing, as you see, there is no function call of any kind in here. But if I call this initialization, because it's assignment at the moment of creation, it calls the one argument constructor, and therefore content over here is going to be gasoline, and it's going to set the thing to gasoline and comes out. And when you display, you're going to see you're going to have a gasoline 220 liters or 220 of 220 leaders uh, and that's uh, essentially called one argument constructors and one argument constructors are uh, called either like this or you can call it with the constructor form so you, you could have said over here container C and you put over here gasoline you could have done that there is absolutely no problem. So essentially, this is essentially 
as we say potato and this one is potato okay same thing no difference I run it it's gonna work the exact same way as you see are we okay with this are we good and to show you that these two things are really identical it's not just for uh, a, a class that I created take a look at this I'm gonna do I'm gonna write a code like this I'm gonna write over here you can write double D is equal to one two three point four five six and then you can say C out D so if I run the program it works the exact same way oh this I have to go to new line so this uh, and L so as you see it's gonna show the value you could have done the double like this you could say double D one two three point four five six again potato and this one is potato okay same no difference all so what you see over here is not because it's a class it's because C++ is object-oriented and initialization at the assignment at the moment of creation is initialization therefore it's a one argument constructor so to be uh, to put it in words I could say assignment at the moment of creation is initialization which is invoking one argument constructor now that could be a one argument constructor for a double or a one argument constructor for a container it does not make any distance the, the difference are we okay with this David why not of course here's the prototype for it let me actually break the window in two here's the here's the prototype for it and here's the uh, implementation for it are we good David all right no problem okay good so we're okay oh my goodness I think soon we're gonna have to take a quick break I need to go get some glass of water or something anyways uh, so what was I talking about uh, ta -da -ta -da -ta -ta. okay yeah so that's that so um, that's how the constructors are uh, are built now obviously you can overload this and make this like a, and have a three argument constructor too there's no problem with that you can simply do something like this you can say uh, let's say I want to set up everything so you can say container container constant character pointer content and then you add other stuff too which are integer uh, amount and integer volume you could do that there's absolutely no problem with that and you can create that function perfectly exactly as you've done the other one and simply call the set function the reason everything goes smoothly is that we we have this designed the uh, the thing properly it has a set function that we can set it any way we want and uh, that's that's what I'm gonna do and this uh, actually we are lucky our set uh, I sh should have uh, broke our um, uh, I called the set function but incorrectly and uh, 
it should have crashed our program but it didn't take this program I would love to actually I'm, I'm gonna I may do that right now I'm gonna take this program that runs perfectly over here on matrix and try to run it and see what happens give me a second let me run it so in here I'm gonna put amount and volume okay so as you see it's it's now I have a three argument constructor um, now I can uh, let me just put over here I'm gonna say B one argument constructor dot CPP <clears throat> now in here instead of that I'm gonna do this I'm gonna say uh, container C with milk actually you can do the universal initialization to either you can say milk you can say milk uh, say I don't know 10 liters and it has 9 liters in it and uh, C dot display and uh, print it out okay so milk 9 these are 9 liters uh, or you can do the universal type of initialization, which essentially is uh, container C and then put curly bracket and the exact same things in it. This is universal. This is old fashioned. This is universal. Initialization. Okay same thing no difference run it it works the exact same way absolutely no difference so are we okay down to this point are we good looking at the code of set so we have set over here so can anybody tell me what a constructor do when the constructor is being called actually can anybody tell me when a constructor is called You can do it. Let's see who's going to type quicker. When you create something new. So when you create something new, the constructor of something is created. So we agree that what constructor is working on is something fresh, brand new. So when, fun, the, when a constructor is being called, the object it's being called upon is something brand new. Do we understand this? Okay, having said that, see if you see anything wrong in, in the default, con in my, uh, uh, let me just bring that up too. Where is clear up? So this, these are the functions that I call in the constructor and the destructor. So you can see them right now on a screen. I want you to take a look at it and tell me what's wrong with this code. Knowing that these are the attributes of the container. So let me just bring this down too so it doesn't occupy much space. So these are the attributes of the container and those are the functions. What do you mean by that, Prince Kumar? What do you mean by nothing to delete? You're on the track, but just want to know what is that. Man, you're a slow typer. Yes, exactly. So if we move this to matrix, it is going to fail. Visual Studio is pretty decent, doesn't say anything. Because you are calling the set function and set first, assuming that 
there is there might be something in it and if it's not you set it to null because of that it will try to delete it but what if it wasn't null because it's brand new I just created it you are lucky that there is nothing in it I really like to actually move this thing to matrix <coughs> and see how it's gonna work so um, so I'm gonna clear everything over here uh, see the uh, temp I should have some kind of a temp thing over here right yeah remove start seriously I think that was a the thing there you go now I'm gonna clone that thing that uh, uh, repository I'm gonna push this to repository first and then I'm gonna clone it so everything saved compiled make sure it's compiles properly rebuild okay and now I'm gonna actually push everything right up to the so I'm gonna say over here commit all I'm gonna say before matrix test okay so done now I'm gonna go to the repository where is give me a give me a browser so that's our repository this is uh, notes that we are writing in and let me clone it so I'm gonna go to matrix and in here I'm gonna say git clone this is what I love about git I don't have to do FTP FTP stuff you just push and pull and you have everything in a fraction of a second all right oh gosh all right so now I have the notes CDOP244 notes CDNAA and we are in 06 yada mm, CD06 yada 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 and these are the files so ls cpp so container prg so these are three things that i have to compile i already put that the compilation stuff in a in an alias so i simply say sub comp that does all the compilation with the things that we need so i'm going to compile all these things together and compile so that that is the g plus plus wall and standard to be 14 and all the things and now i'm going to run it with valgrin so i'm going to say and valgrin is uh subscript i call it subscript subscript ws that's uh, it makes the executable ws so if i run it this is what's going to happen look at all the things that it's giving me depends see jump or move depends on initialized value container set yada yada the container so it says the container set that you are calling in a container uh, container uh, constructor in program prg.cpp line 12 an initial value by, by created by yeah so as you say it says you had an initial initial an initialized value and you were doing something with it program prgcpp line 12 and if I come over here and now you know why I tell you guys that you need to have to have running something on Visual Studio and then Matrix. It is too forgiving and that's why uh, many Windows applications crash so easily. Anyways, so how can we fix this problem? What, what, what we can do, you see this init thingy that I have done that initially sets everything to null? Um, where is that init thing? Init, 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 init one thing I can do is to call that in it right over here so I can say over here in it to make sure everything is clean and nice before anything happens in the constructor in it okay just by doing something like this I have initialized all the values that are already set and done so there should not be any problem now if I actually so I save this let me just compile it diagnostic tools we don't want rebuild all right and 
And then what we're going to do, uh, yeah, we're going to go to uh, here and commit it. Okay, I'm going to say fix matrix problem version 1. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to submit it and see if it's going to uh, be okay now. So in here, I'm going to say git pull just to get the changes. Done, and I'm going to compile it again and run it again. And done, you see? Milk nine liters, it's going to say no leaks are possible. So by fixing the uh, thing that I did not initialize, I have uh, fixed the problem with uh, a memory thingy. By the way, Chris Kumar, you have 1% uh, for your test, midterm test. Remind me of it. I don't remember your face, so you have to rem remind me. I don't know who you are. All right? Tell me a yes so, so I know. All right. All right. So that's one way. Another way of initialization is, is to actually initialize it. In new C++, after C++14 and stuff like that, you can actually initialize the values of a class right in a definition of the class. So instead of having init over here, I can do something so I don't have to worry about initialization at all, which means I can completely remove the function for initialization if the initialization is not a procedure and it's just setting values. If initialization is supposed to loop through something and do something or open a file and do something, then no, of course, you need to have a function. But if initialization is merely setting some values to some initial values, then we don't need it. I can just remove those initializations. So I'm not going to have an init function over here anymore. And instead, I'm just going to initialize everything over here. Initialize that, initialize that, and initialize that. So what happens at any... So these initializations happen before the constructor is actually invoked. It's even before that. So it's pre initial So object is born, initializations happen, then constructor gets called. Are we okay with this? So now if I actually come to the, uh, save this again and compile it, what the devil was that? Oh, <laughs> okay, let me say uh, rebuild. Save this. Now if I push it again, with fixing with initialization I'm gonna say commit all right now I'm gonna come back over here git pull oh wrong password one more time now I'm gonna compile it again so the initialization is completely removed did I call the initialization anywhere else other than those functions? Oh, we'll know. Anyways, so compile, run, and there we go. No memory leak. Everything's beautiful. Are we good? Would this have an issue with multiple definition? Uh, since it's in a header file. What do you mean by multiple definition? No, not at all. You have safeguards. So the your, your, uh, the definition of your uh, header file is available to any code using the container. There is not going to be a multiple definition because you have safeguards. Even if you did have, these values are not what's good. These are not these are not something to get executed. These are these are requests from compiler when 
the class container is created I want the values to be initialized are we good with that Kwang? all right so that's that and now ladies and gentlemen I need a break so I don't know about you uh, let's take a break for uh, like uh, five ten minutes and then we'll come back I'm gonna see if I have COVID or not all right I'm gonna pause please remind me to resume recording when I come back I'll see you in a minute resume resume all right so the constructors uh, are covered another thing we need to talk about over here is is this take a look at this you see this read thingy that I have over here the read function okay um, or set amount or is safe and uh, no, not is safe but set over here these that these stuff that are all returning void there's always something cuter to do than this okay you have seen many times I have returned references of stuff and I said that the functions can represent the reference of what they are returning uh, are we okay with this so are we okay that reference of anything reference of anything uh, uh, a function that returns a reference represents what it's uh, returning and can re uh, uh, replace it as we did over here display and end L which means display impersonate C out because it's returning O stream we're okay with that hopefully I don't know half of you are here or you are um, are we here are we good I see we have two fangals over here nice okay so the next thing uh, we need to uh, talk about over here and have uh, um, uh, some insight on it is that what if I want to return the reference of the owner out what if I want the read to return the reference the reference of the container it's sitting within how can I do that so in here after read is done oh this read is not fixed the read was supposed to clear um, cn dot ignore the backslash n. It was supposed to wipe out um, backslash ends afterwards. Anyway, so this read after it's done in here, I want to be able to return the container return this container how can I do that the answer is pretty simple there is a keyword in C++ that keyword is called this this is a pointer so this 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 is a pointer it's an address address of what address of the object you're currently in so if I want to return the address of the current container I can write over here container pointer and now this read is going to return the address so in here I can say container pointer and now read is returning the address of the uh, of the current container which means in here instead let's let's forget about this thing so this is uh, let me just uh, save this and change it so I'm gonna say uh, ABC and I'm gonna call it um, just constructor it's no special one it has many arguments so it's just a constructor okay let's take get that get out of that one and bring this back in so in here I'm gonna create a container C and now I can actually say C dot read and now read is returning the address of C because in here 
I'm saying return this so it's returning the address of the current of ob uh, object which in this case is C so in here instead of saying C dot display I can do C read and then put an arrow because arrow essentially means uh, uh, what you may call it uh, essentially means uh, at left side I have a pointer so it says the pointer of C display of that therefore read and display is going to display things back to back so in here I can say uh, milk 20 and 10 and it's gonna immediately call it and and execute it do we understand this but of course pointers are so yesterday we we don't want to do you po use pointers anymore we want to use references I want read to return become an exactly like I did it for display which display can represent a C out I want read to res to represent the C that is being called from if I want to do that then this is what I need to do I need to say re return target of this which means the reference of the current object and I do not want to return it by value so I'm gonna put a reference over here so now my read will actually return a reference of container and not the container itself so now in here I can say return this and in here I'm saying uh, container so therefore it returns a reference of a container and in here instead of an arrow I can put a dot so I can say read dot C dot read dot display so it means call the read of C then this is gonna return C it's gonna say and then after that it's gonna be called the read of this uh, display of C and it displays it and the story continues so now uh, we know how to return the reference of a current object and I, I what I would suggest at any moment or time that you are programming if you see your function is a void don't waste it make that function return the reference of the current object so we can cascade stuff easily in it so instead of I'm gonna change all the voids that I have over here to container reference it's not gonna because it just impersonates the the current object it's not gonna t make any harm if you don't use it it's just not not gonna be used but if you use it then it's gonna make your code smaller and much more uh, professional so this is gonna return container reference the ones that are void they are going to return a container reference and at the end you say return this where is the other one do I have any other void no not here there you go this one and it's gonna return this and this one I'm gonna return this okay there we go so now let me see if there anything over here I need to like for example what I can do over here would be this now I have set function over here that sets the, an object to whatever I want so now in here I can actually say C dot set so I'm setting the C to water it was uh, uh, it was reading a uh, milk and then in here I'm gonna say 100 and I'm gonna say 50 and now immediately afterwards I can say dot display and that display returns the the C out so now you can actually cascade all the functions back to back with a dot uh, and that makes your code much smaller and uh, and easier to read so this is the uh, how we can actually deal with the uh, current object are we okay with this <laughs> So this is the syntax of constructors and how they work and uh, essentially yeah so this is what it's going to do and uh, um, there is nothing else to cover for today uh, do we have any questions any questions <laughs>
is all stream like container what does that mean I don't understand what does that mean uh, you mean returning your you're comparing you're comparing display returning C out and read returning container is that what you're saying uh, no uh, this one is returning reference of a C out because its job is display I want it to return C out this one is returning container because what it just read was the container that's why I'm returning this uh, display has other purpose if display was a void yes I would make it return the container but if I want to return anything with display it just makes sense to be what involves the displaying which is C out does that make sense Van Gogh? all right anyone else uh, Kaman and Keshav you had questions Amen. Wrong touch. And Kishav. I see Kong is typing. Just want to see if there is any message. Any any question? Nobody's typing anything. Any question one? Any question two? Kong, you're typing for half an hour. Okay, I'm sorry, I can't seem to understand why we use this. Like, we don't want to set variable within the function. Uh, uh, the first part that you, you don't seem to understand why we use this fine but you say we don't want to set variable what setting a variable within a function has to do with the address of the current object return like give me a like for ex so you're saying in here in set amount I return the value is that what you're saying define normally what do you mean by normally we normally return a variable there is nothing if what it mm, logic dictates what you need to return in here what is if I'm setting the amount if I'm setting the container to a value why do I need to return that value again what is the purpose of it but when I'm returning a container reference I can take over the action right after setting the amount without uh, without I can uh, I can uh, uh, sorry a message came up this kind of distracted me so in here with the set amount thingy when I'm calling the set amount immediately after I can continue my work with container without having a new line take a look at here if I don't return this then in here I have to say C dot display and in here I have to say C dot display so I wrote two more lines but when I'm returning this it is and not only that when we come later on to operator overloading you will see that for example how do you think you write something like this how do you think this happens this is used because this is implemented with OStream 
inside O stream returning this. So essentially C out and A after the process is done, C out returns this. Therefore that operator is replaced with C out. Again, this one gets executed, returns this. Therefore C out happens. This one gets executed, returns this. Therefore C out happens. And because of that, this chain reaction of stuff are happening. If we don't return this, we can never do that. We have to do everything individually. I hope that makes sense. When it comes to our operator overloading, it's gonna you're gonna understand it much understand it much better. But just keep in mind that returning target of this returns the reference or a copy of what uh, you have uh, uh, to return the reference of an object or uh, a copy of an object. Okay. Any other question? It's, it, it creates a chain reaction. We call it the cascading action. Anytime you have void, unless in a program specifically they tell you, you can safely return the reference of the current object. Not a container, current object. So, so when you are using void in a class, you can always return the reference of a class, whatever that class is, employee, student, whatever, with absolutely no problem. You may never use it, but it's not an over overload. It's not an overhead. It's not going to add anything to the to the code or make it inefficient. It does not make any difference. It just makes the code more dynamic. Let's put it that way. Okay. Anyone else? Any question one? Any question two? Any question three, if I don't see anybody typing. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have yourself a beautiful day. And hopefully, if everything goes well and I'm, and I'm okay, I'll see you on Wednesday. Ciao, everyone. Bye-bye. Stop recording.